Welcome to the Raw and a Half podcast, where we get real and then some. I am your host, Jasmine Siri, and every week I will discuss different topics, share my experiences, and discuss how I navigate through life consciously so we can reach higher heights and deeper dimensions of the mind so that we can accomplish our goals from a healed and open place together. So, let's get started. I think for so long, we allow generations of hard trying and suffering to be the excuse or the norm of our experience. So much that we don't even question it. And more importantly, because we have only been taught to just endure, or we are only praised because of our resilience over time, we are not even aware enough to not be okay with the things that are not okay. And in this episode, it's not going to be more soft life content being shoved down your throat because I think we have all had enough of that. There is more to embody femininity than just being soft. Although it is a great strength, I speak for the dimensions to come where we all as a people, wherever we fall on the spectrum of masculinity or femininity, are worthy of respect, grace, and empathy no matter how soft or how solid we are. But I do think a conversation is worth being had about ending the illusion that anything good will come after we suffer. I feel the Black community especially is just now able to open up the Pandora's box of our triggers to uproot the many mentalities and ideologies that have held us back. And this is a major one, at least it is for me. And by making our suffering just a part of life, we don't even realize how deep it's rooted in our oppressor's benefit. You know, in order to capture our bodies, they 100% had to start with our minds. So when we do the work to change our subconscious mind, we have to start there. And that is exactly what I'm going to do today. And if we really want to break the cycle and end generational curses, we have to touch them. So I will let you in on a conversation that I'm having with myself about removing myself from the illusion that I have to suffer for anything that I want so that the abundance that I want headed my way isn't delayed because of my inability to perceive it all. So if this is something that interests you, stick around. I'm excited about this one. Let me know what you think about the episode And be warned, this may erupt some triggering ideas or memories in the mind, so please know that I'm coming from a place of love and it is not my intention to trigger you. But I also cannot apologize for the very truth that may come out with this content and it could potentially help someone. So, I've said my piece. I wanted to start with the illusion of self-worth. I had to begin with defining self-worth. And I think we all should. Let's think about it. We define self-worth as a sense of one's own value as a human being. And how do you define your value? I guess that's up to us to decide on our own. I feel like defining value, or at least what I ask Google, one way to build self-value is to recognize and appreciate your strengths and abilities. I think we all should take a step back and think about some things that we are good at, and the things that we enjoy doing. This is so important to define because you may have a lot of things that you can do well that are also not in alignment with your purpose. And in these episodes, in in my journey throughout YouTube, it's all about purpose-driven actions because, I mean, if we're not doing things in alignment with our purpose, what are we doing? You know, not to say that everything that we do has to be so serious, but I'm on a mission to fulfill my purpose and my destiny. And I feel like a lot of people that are listening and that are watching are kind of also on that journey as well. So I want to make sure that I'm making content intentionally for that. But moving on, I think most people feel stuck when they have curated a lifestyle based on things that they can do and are good at but not necessarily fulfilling for them. For me, 
in my journey to self-value, if I can think back, there was a point in time in my life as a child where I felt my value was in my ability to stay small. Not small in size, but as in less of a burden, less of an expense. I think growing up raised by one parent and witnessing the sacrifice made on my behalf or my sibling's behalf, it can make you feel bad for existing. Just imagine growing up wanting an abundant life and having this type of mentality holding you back. It's definitely something that I needed to unpack and that's why it was such an important topic to me. I didn't realize how heavy that was until I got older. So when I was a child, if I didn't have to tell my mom anything that required her to be a parent, I just wouldn't. If I needed something for school or wanted to do something extracurricular, if I couldn't do it on my own, I just made those wants as a child disappear and developed a sense of false awareness that my existence was a problem someone else had to deal with. And then I grew older and I became responsible for myself and I made it an effort not to tell myself no. Because for so many years growing up, I forcibly told myself no because I feared disappointment or I had a really strong sense of like false hope that nothing was possible because of the limitations that I had as a child. So if I was fully responsible for myself as an adult, I wanted to make sure that everything that I could have that I wanted, I was going to make it happen for myself. So if I wanted to become a superstar, I was going to do it. If I wanted a crab boil for dinner, I got it because in a way I needed to heal that younger girl in me that was only allowed to have the things within my caregiver's borders. And when you take a step back and you see how small you decided to shrink yourself to live amongst and not mentally go crazy, you enter into a world on your own and you're like feeling the sense of freedom and you want it all. And I think that's why I so often choose to show up because there were so many things that I had to pull myself out of just to operate as an adult. And when so many people say like, you know, I grew up and I had a very low self-esteem or I grew up and I just had a very pessimistic mindset, believe them. And when someone is admitting that, like you have to understand how much courage it takes to realize like, I was not living in a full existence as I was younger and I am here today as a representation that that way of thinking is not necessarily conducive or okay for a better future and wanting to choose better is very important. So take people seriously when they say that. Anyway, when I grew just a few little steps after that type of mindset, I defined my value as how hard I can work by being helpful to others and how long I can get by without complaining about anything. And yes, when you hear this, you're probably like, like, okay, you work hard. We all do. Okay. You want to be an asset wherever you are. Isn't that the norm in anything we do? And yes, but it's only okay until you realize you're working hard, whether people are paying you well or not. You're working hard whether people value or not, whether people respect you or not. And you have to take a step back and realize, wait, why am I existing in spaces where everyone else is enjoying themselves and they're not working half as hard as I am just to be here? And this is actually enjoyable for them. But because I'm me and I'm under surveillance... I realized I was entering spaces where I was working hard because I had a whip to my back or I was so micromanaged because of who I was. People were waiting for me to make a mistake. And I assumed that that was normal for me to work do you see how like slave-like that is? And, and I've worked in a lot of spaces where I've been the only minority. So I was working hard because I was only the diversity hire. 
I have to suffer through working 10 times harder and exceeding the expectations that no one else is falling under. And I have to suffer through walking on eggshells and being 15% of who I am and still being policed on top of that. So a lot of times, people of color in the workplace, we find ourselves not only doing our job, but making sure people feel safe to be around us. And I had to take a step back and say, hmm, they're not going to care about me enough to say, hey, you're working yourself to a pulp. They're not going to see the situation from a bigger scale enough to say, hey, I actually do have my own personal bias, so I go a little harder on you because I know black people are known for working hard. They're not going to say that, so we do all of the work, and then when we're thrown away at the end, there's there's just not good feelings towards the end, so we have to really define what our value is, and we have to start from scratch, and we only know that when we enter these situations and we learn from these experiences. And I had to realize that I'm only forced to think this way when I'm around people who have not existed in spaces where people of color are not the majority, and they don't know how to change until we show up without the box placed on us. And the minute the box is gone, they feel threatened. And that's not a sign for them that they have a personal bias. And I know that sounds extreme, but I live in Austin, Texas. And as much as I wish that the people here have evolved, I'm going to be honest and say that they haven't because there are too many people that have the same mindset that live here. And it's not enough to bring about real change. So I'm done breaking my back into excellence that they can't even touch just to be victimized by people who realize they don't know how to handle not being able to control it. So to move forward, I had to really think about what makes me resourceful in a way that I feel like I'm not being exhausted, in a way that I feel like my integrity is still intact, that I still have some dignity at the end of the day, that I can go to sleep feeling like I'm actually making a difference in people's lives. I had to really do some, some shifting in my mindset because generationally I feel like people of color, we see our value by status and maybe our, you know, positions in life, our jobs, the things that we have, they forced us into this rat race. And then when they realize there's no cheese at the end, and it's just really us kind of running around in circles and it's it just looks like a minstrel show to them so we compete with one another about how well we're able to pretend to exist in certain spaces just so we can survive and all the while there's so many other conversations that are had when we're not around about how much no matter what we do or how hard we work or how great we are it's not enough to make them feel safe to be around us so when that idea of slave labor being my strength and my value, when that changed and I stopped equating that to my value, I took a real good look at who I am in my day to day and how people feel when they speak with me and how I'm doing my best at making people feel seen, how I'm making people feel at home within themselves when they're around me or when they're watching me. That's my value. And it took me 29 years to come to that realization. But you know what? It's such a powerful realization. And three years ago, I journaled this. I was living in my apartment and I wrote a letter basically to God stating that I want a purpose that does more to benefit the inner dwellings of a person's spirit instead of a person's physical body because I've worked in the fitness world for so many years and it was a dead end for me and you know life was getting crazy the prices were going up but not the wages there was just this great divide that I saw in the class system and it just seems like no matter how hard I work it's still not enough and it's not realistic and that's not a working system and no one is happy about it so 
I just needed to figure out what I could do about it with everything that I am and what I feel like I have to offer. So basically, I wrote a cover letter and a resume to God asking for a job that I would proudly give my life and work for him if it meant that I make a real difference in the world. And it just felt like ever since then I've been reborn and with time, like a direct path was revealed. And what I will say is that when I'm writing and the topics come to me and I'm doing research to better be of service for the people that hear me, there's no suffering through. Even when things around me are not perfect, what I come back to is this and this feels like just a fish coming back to water and I'm just happy to be arrived to this very place in my life and I'm not gonna lie lately there's just been so many different things that have happened in my life and like things happen in everyone's life everyone has these things and um so the other day I was really just like working a lot and I was you know grateful for it you know I enjoy the work that I do um but my body was tired and I was going to get some food and I'm in the drive through and the person that's in the drive through they are aware of me because I've been there a numerous amount of time. So we're always nice and we have fun exchanges, but it's always been very short. And yesterday I'm pulling up, I had already ordered. So I go to the window and I hand over my card and the person tells me I'm going to feed you today. Don't worry about it. And I just like, uh, I was just so grateful it was something very very small like of course I could have afforded it but it was just the fact that someone was kind to me in a situation where I feel like nothing that I do is just enough you know you, when you have those days where you're just feeling like you're at your end that was yesterday for me and his one little like speck of kindness he probably did that to multiple people that day but because it happened to me I was just like crying like thank you so much um but it's so funny like that same day or that night I went to sleep I woke up and like I heard a voice in my ear whatever my voice that I hear saying no matter what what they cannot touch is my word they can destroy everything else, but they can never do anything to my word. And I truly felt like it was somehow the divine speaking to the fact that whatever is in his will, whatever is said to be done in the divine plans, no one can stand in the way of it. No matter how hard things fall apart and no matter how many things are like up in the air, his will be done. And sometimes when we're doing so much work and we get these spiritual attacks, they hit so close to home that we don't know who, like if they can do this, what else could they do? If they've been able to destroy so much, what else is under the table and they can take your family they can take the people closest to you they can make you feel so alone for the work that you're trying to do in the world and i think i needed that reassurance of like at the end of the day they cannot do anything to my word i know that the work that i'm trying to do or the work that i have been doing is so deep that it causes a lot of like spiritual attacks like i'm not gonna lie like at first i didn't believe that that was a thing at first i didn't it, that just wasn't a reality in my mind because i'm always on like no nah, love light higher dimensions no it doesn't exist but it it, it does and it touches you and, and it has the ability to break your spirit in so many ways because you do all of this work and you put in all of this effort and then it seems like something can just a wind can blow through and just knock all of your sh over you know what i'm saying and um this week was definitely one of those weeks but at the end of the day you know it's already written what i'm supposed to do and if i'm trying to bring out the most good and if I'm trying to do the most good no matter what no matter my mistakes because I'm not a perfect person 
right? I don't think anybody is. But the fact that I, someone like me, has the audacity to want to bring good and um, pull light into the world, it's making so many little doo-doo heads upset. And <laughs> I'm... I can't apologize for that. I just have to keep persevering. Like even today, the spirit of a procrastination just hit my hit me. And I had been at work all day. And just imagine, I've been at work waiting to talk about this, thinking about this topic, thinking about expressing myself and sharing all of these things and doing all of this. And the minute that I get home, I'm sitting down doing nothing. And that feels just so good to the point where I'm just making myself sick because I have this back and forth in my mind about like, you're not doing enough. This is not what you should be doing. Anyway, you need to rest. You need to lay down. You need to just go to sleep. Like there's so many entities that hope that I just completely stop, that I just kind of fall off of track and I miss the actual purpose and the mission behind it all. But I'm telling you, if you are a part of that 144,000, the community of people that are trying to bring about real change and bring about this new dimension of thought and healing and awareness just keep holding on keep that consistency keep yourself in a flow i had to go to my car before i did this just to get some fresh air but i have this timer on my phone or it's just like a note notification that i have every day at 3 p.m and it says i pray for a calm heart and determination to meet my goals i pray for a calm heart and determination to meet my goals and that's just like it's something that's very small, but it makes a really big difference for me. So I try to make sure I see that and I read that once a day and it really does help me push through. But anyway, now I want to get to the topic of like suffering through relationship or relationship suffering. You know, connection takes effort, but feelings of love should be easy if it is genuine and if I could dive deep a little bit about relationship suffering, I want to start off by saying I'm not married and I have no children. I've only been in relationships, none that I speak about openly. And I felt like I should say that because some people truly don't feel comfortable listening to relationship insight from someone who hasn't walked the path of a marriage or relationships that are on the cusp of that um, and I want to say that I completely respect that but there are things that I'm learning about relating so I want to limit the expectation now because you know I'm learning I'm growing I'm evolving but as a woman I feel like I am you know I speak from a level of empathy and understanding to a wide variety of things so I may just say something that could reach you and if not I've made my peace with that but moving forward I'm just really over the idea of a struggle love gone are the days where as a woman I feel like any type of connection or bond is made better or stronger by the struggles and hardships that happen in between and I know that's hard for some people to hear but because we all have different definitions of what struggle is there are different things and situations most people can endure that others can't and i think especially on social media we always go back and forth about debating about what you should or shouldn't do or you can and can't put up with and what makes you valuable or not and my sentiment is this i'm not struggling to prove to anyone what i deserve liking me thinking I'm attractive, wanting to spend time with me, choosing me over someone else, or the inability to choose me, respecting me and my feelings when I'm present and when I'm not present, all of that is the bare minimum. I'm not suffering through any environments where that is not present. And I think so many of us have to work 10 times hard just to be tolerated and we go above and beyond to be the nurturers and the mood boards for strength. And then when it comes to the softness we deserve, they tell us they need more convincing because society doesn't really digest softness from people of color or women of color well. And it's a thing. And 
I have to acknowledge that because we are just kind of left out of the softness thing because of how much we struggle and endure and we get so much pushback and we get so hated on we get so humbled because we just want the grace and the softness and the benefit of doubt that everyone else receives so repeat after me the divine extends his abundance of grace to me so i walk in peace with who i am rest is my birthright softness is my place of origin i'm welcome to be as soft and as solid wherever i am I think because before society told us who we were, we were all of these things. So it's, I think, a matter of unlearning that no matter what society says, they were wrong. They've been lying to us from the jump. So why are we still keeping things that have for so long made us feel bad about who we are? So moving forward, I'm someone who has had more of an anxious attachment style and I would be in relationships that were not bad, but not 100% perfect. And because things happened that were less than perfect and the embarrassment that crowded my better judgment kicked in, I think sticking around and giving a person benefit of doubt or giving a person the room to write a different story with me about the connection we had was what kept me in the undesirable situations. It's like I would share a pen with these people and they couldn't write any different because that was who they were, that I was just not really able to accept or because of where they were in their lives and where we were in our lives. um, I was unable to unlock different versions of this person and I had to make peace with that. And for so long... Society has taught us that if we don't receive these things, there's something wrong with us. If we don't get this outcome, if someone doesn't value us, it's our problem. And it's not. I don't think there's anyone out there in the world that should force us to question our worth. And when we take a step back, we'll really see that the thing that we're forcing a connection with, the things that we're forcing to see us, really ain't shit. And I really don't care what anyone says by experience. How a person betrays you or a person betraying you in general is an indicator that the connection is done or can no longer take place in the same form again. And we can forgive people without granting them access in our lives. And there is no one so important that they get to hurt you, betray you, take you for granted, but still all the while keep the same place in your life. You don't have to suffer through places and through experiences and people that do not love you or where you do not feel love just for the sake of the hero story at the end. It's really not worth it. So to sum this up, connection takes work, but the feelings of love, like true love, should be easy. No matter how things come about, if you love a person, there should always be a way back, whether through friendship or other ways. When you are with someone that has fully released guards with you enough to not speak defensively about things that are misunderstandings or just small things, I think I had to realize that if a person is actually fighting for connection just as much as you, the conversations will ultimately be different because it's not you versus them, it's you both against the real problem. And if you both are able to do the work, there should be no problem, you know? And lastly, I want to talk about transactional suffering. I saw a video of someone saying something along the lines of people of color have the preconceived notion that our suffering is transactional, that we are no longer worthy without suffering, but we have to realize that we've already been bought. And it's a slave reference, but we have to realize that we don't have to make the testimony of our life one of great sacrifice and pain. Why is that so expected of us? And that's what sparked this conversation to me that I felt like I needed to share because yeah, Why is that so hard to grasp? Like my freedom has already been solidified. Now the work is in the mind. And if we say we want abundance, 
How could we possibly conceptualize God's amount of abundance for us if I still have a small view of what that amount truly is or what I'm worthy of? We have to awaken ourselves to our birthright of ease, of fulfillment, of purpose, of financial abundance, of mental liberation. And that's what I pray for everyone, but especially for people that are intentionally unpacking and shedding the layers of our captivity of the mind. It is our time to step into what has been promised to us. You know, the first will be last and the last will be first. I truly believe that and I'm happy that we're able to have these conversations because if there is anyone that cannot perceive goodness, that miracles happen in their life, that they will be, you know, the next millionaire in their family or in their bloodline, or they are that generational curse breaker, you know, I want to make sure I'm having all of the conversations that could potentially bring you closer to that. And maybe you didn't really see it how I have seen it for a very long time. And maybe what I've said has brought a little bit more, you know, maybe the things that I've said has caused some gears to turn in the mind. And if so, great. You know, these are conversations that I have with myself about why I fear my potential, why I stop myself from being great, why I procrastinate, why I feel like so many people can have, but my story is the person that doesn't have. Like, why am I so used to that narrative about my life? And this whole glow up, this whole rebranding, self-actualization is stripping away all of the things, all of the conditioning, all of the societal garbage that has kept people of color in bondage. And I want to be a part of you making your dreams come true. So if I can nip all of those little things in the bud, I'm going to do that because I love you. Anyway, I think that is all that I have. My brain is tired. Um... I hope to see you all in my next one. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing. I hope this conversation has sparked some, some interesting thoughts inside of you. It definitely did in me. So happy that I'm able to exist on this space and be accepted and be truly like seen by some of you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Oop, already said that. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Jasmine Siri. This is also in podcast form, so if you are on Spotify and you want to listen to my podcast, totally do that. This is the Raw and a Half Podcast with Jasmine Siri. That is all that I have. Hope to see you all in my next one. Bye.